Asteroids, rocky killers of our solar system. They pose a grave danger to the Earth. Tonight, we will look at the asteroids and the apocalypse from space that they can become. Tonight, this will be a special 3.0 version of this episode as I have made some technical errors in the earlier versions of this episode. So tonight, I offer my apologies and please enjoy. Asteroid Impact, tonight's subject. Tonight, our plausible asteroid impact scenario starts off in the near future, 9-13-2020, our solar system. A date not too far off in the future, a date we can still imagine. On this day, billions of people go about their daily lives, oblivious and totally unaware of the cataclysmic event that is about to take place and befall our planet. Our beautiful world is truly a magnificent jewel hanging in the void of space. It is a wonder to behold. Many astronauts have said so. Yet, when people think of nature, they think of the mountains the rivers, snow-capped valleys, trees. They think of forests, fresh air, good sunlight. When people think of nature, they also think of fresh running water. Water is a precious commodity. We cannot live without it. Most people take our beautiful life-giving, fragile planet for granted. But not today. On today, people will discover that the Earth is not such a safe place as one would be led to believe. The asteroid belt exists between Mars and Jupiter. Millions upon millions of asteroids, ranging in size from small pebbles to the size of Mount Everest and small states, roam this belt in our solar system. Collisions happen on a daily basis. Millions of collisions a day between these monsters. Today, one of the millions of violent collisions will cause one of the massive asteroids to head out our way. It is the size of the state of Delaware and is traveling at 80,000 miles per hour. It is most unfortunate that on this day, astronomers only detect the asteroid, the world undersized asteroid, too late for real solutions to be analyzed. They named the asteroid Shiva after the Hindu god, the destroyer of worlds. On 3-13-2020, the announcement is made public. Billions do prepare for the impact as best they can. Having little options, the United States, Russia, and China turn the weapons of mass destruction towards the heavens in a last desperate effort to destroy Shiva. Unfortunately, the nuclear missiles fail. Shiva slams into the earth at 80,000 miles per hour. Even the earth's thick atmosphere does nothing to ablate the velocity of this monster asteroid. The impact is devastating. Millions of people die initially. Billions will die following this cataclysmic event.
for the survivors of the initial impact and the resulting effects of this cataclysmic event. Their nightmare, their journey through hell on Earth is only just beginning. So, how does an asteroid the size of the state of Delaware become so destructive to our much more massive planet? For this answer, we need to turn to Sir Isaac Newton and his laws of physics, the three main laws of physics. However, the second law is what applies to this scenario the most and more aptly explains why the asteroid is so devastating. Force equals mass times acceleration. So let's examine this second law of Isaac Newton. Simply put, the asteroid's mass is not what changes. The asteroid's mass stays the same. However, because of the asteroid's velocity, its impact is what is going to be increased, not its mass. Another example would be, if your mass was 50 kilograms and you weighed 110 pounds, on Mars, you would still be 50 kilograms, but your weight would only be 42 pounds. Your mass would not change, only your weight. Let us also imagine a professional baseball player dropping a baseball in the palm of your hand. It wouldn't hurt very much. The impact would be minimal. Now let's say the same baseball is thrown at 100 miles per hour and you try to catch it in your hand. If you still had a hand left, it would hurt like hell. But the impact would be so much greater because the velocity of the baseball changed, not its mass. Its mass would still be the same as with the asteroid. The resulting asteroid impact, particularly if it hit the ocean, would cause tidal waves or tsunamis the size of which human beings had never seen before in history. 1100 foot tall waves traveling at subsonic or supersonic velocities. Temperatures would drop to arctic levels as dust and debris from the impact block the sun's life-giving rays from coming through our atmosphere. And as a result, the dust and debris would poison our upper atmosphere, resulting in acid rain, almost like nuclear winter. It would change the pH levels of the ocean, and only the hardiest creatures would survive. Indeed, it would become an apocalyptic nightmare, a true hell on earth for all life forms. We will now take a look at the real asteroids, like Apophis. As you see in the diagram, it's compared to the size and structure of the Empire State Building. Truly a massive object. And we also have Bingyu, which is compared in size to not only Empire State Building, but a Delta Heavy rocket. These asteroids are massive and they roam our solar system. We have had the technology for a long time to explore these asteroids, and we have done so. We've gathered a great deal of data on these roaming monsters in our solar system. These are true world-ender asteroids. The biggest of them all is Vesta. 
Vesta actually has a gravitational field that is surprisingly robust. So, how do we prevent our own destruction? Our space programs hold the key to saving ourselves from utter destruction and going the way of the dinosaurs. We are a fledgling spacefaring race, but we are nonetheless a spacefaring civilization. And that is the way we will save ourselves. A nuclear strike against an oncoming asteroid with a mass of millions or perhaps billions of tons would simply not work. Nuclear weapons that detonate in the vacuum of space are merely a radioactive light show. What would be required would be a more practical and long-term approach using better technologies. We know how to maneuver and intercept with asteroids as we've done so with unmanned vehicles. That part is not hard. The only part we have to figure out is how exactly would we change the asteroid's course and trajectory by only a few degrees? We would merely need to receive early warning in enough time to rendezvous and nudge the asteroid off course. There are several ways this can be done. It can be done with lasers or it can be done by strapping small propulsive devices to the asteroid and merely pushing it, pushing it gradually off course by a few degrees. This may give us our best chance. Perhaps one of the most challenging and complex aspects of the whole asteroid impact scenario is quite simply human nature. By our very nature, we humans are violent, we're illogical, we're passionate, creative, we argue and bicker amongst ourselves. So the question is, how bad do we want to live? Can we get past politics to save ourselves? Do we bicker about how much money this is going to cost? Is that even important in the scheme of saving billions of lives? If we can get past ourselves, Perhaps we may be able to save ourselves. An oncoming asteroid does not care about our politics or our prejudices or our petty differences. Billions of lives are at stake. Every man, woman, and child that walk upon this earth will depend on what we do, what decisions we make. Our civilization, our technology, our culture. We humans have argued and fought amongst ourselves since the very beginning of our civilization. But perhaps we may be able to change. Perhaps this incident will be what may unite humanity once and for all. It has been a proven fact that during many natural disasters, we humans have shown the ability to pull together and come together as one civilization and help each other. So, which would you prefer? Thanks for watching. 
And as always, I appreciate my loyal subscribers and my viewers and my friends. And thank God Almighty for giving me the strength to be able to do these shows and videos. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, God bless you. Good night. And keep looking up.